Now we just have to bond with her and complete the City of Vice storyline. Okay, friendos. Where do we go? We need to pick up some more soul and or use up our money. Aha! Soul! Going to a gas station! Gas stations are overpriced, full of pollutants, and their dirty bathrooms seem to invent new diseases every day. But they're a necessary evil if you want to make your car move. Welcome to road trip life! So, what do you do? We will use the restroom! Oh, wait, I think we've already been through this event. Yeah, we went through this event the first time we came around on our first run. Okay, let's just skip this because we already know how this will end. Let's give them a free piggyback ride. Yep, there we go. We're using our stamina to get some soul. But we're gonna slowly lose soul to our money. Let's go to the charming village so we can spend our money. An idyllic little village where absolutely no atrocities ever take place. This idyllic little village is filled with flowers, maples, and celebration galore. Which means there's gotta be something weird going on here, right? Nobody's this happy all the time. Eh, maybe you're just being paranoid. This is a chance to have fun! What do you do first? Let's get rid of our money. You go to the town square. The town folk are dressed in white wearing flower crowns and dancing barefoot around the maple. Where there's flower crowns and maples, there's usually shrooms. Your girl's gonna find some. Don't do anything dumb while I'm gone. Is that a puppet show over there? I love puppets. Come on, Zoe, we need to say hi to the puppets. Scott enthusiastically leads you to a puppet show meant for an audience of seven to nine year olds. Hiya, kids, I'm Obi the Obedient, says the main puppet. I just love obeying the commands of Graftomet the Flesh Overlord. He's the coolest god around. Hi, I'm Scooter the Skinless, says a puppet that should never be shown to children. It's so fun to sacrifice my skin to Lord Graftomet. He gave me all this candy for it. Really, I do love candy, says Obi the Obedient. If I skin myself for Lord Graftomet, will I get candy too? Of course you will, Obi. All of you will get candy if you skin yourselves. Woohoo, free candy! Anyone got a silver knife? Nothing else will work on my strong werewolf skin. Scott ignores all of your very cogent arguments for why he shouldn't be skinning himself alive. The puppets told me to get candy, Zoe. I trust the puppets. Don't you know it's illegal for puppets to lie? Yeah, okay, logic isn't gonna work here. If Scott will only listen to puppets, then you'll have to give him one hell of a puppet show. What puppet show do you improvise to literally save Scott's skin? Skin, that cool body part that stops high fives from being horribly painful. The puppet that hid propaganda. A story about not making important life choices just because a puppet show told you to. True. Great idea. You spend too many on craft materials to make your puppet show. Your show begins with a group of puppet friends going to see a puppet show within a puppet show. Stay with me. It only gets meta from here. The puppet show within the show encourages friends to skin themselves alive. Because it's the hot new trend everyone's jumping onto. Wow, let's skin ourselves because puppets told us to, says the dumb friend. My entire character arc is taking dubious life advice from puppets. Hey, I really identify with this guy. Not so fast, says the hot rational friend, the dumb friend totally wants to bow. Never make a big decision blindly because the puppet told you to. Remember kids, puppets can be good, but they can also implant cultish propaganda into the minds of impressionable people. Use your brains and stay safe. Huh, this seems like a good message. But why should I listen to this puppet show over a different puppet show? Wait, did you hear that guy in the audience? The rational puppet says! Is this a puppet show? Are we in a puppet show right now? Are we puppets? Let's look at the facts. We have felt skin, no internal organs, there's a hand up our asses controlling all of our movements. Oh my god, we are puppets! What happens when the puppet show ends? When Zoe takes me off her hand, will I cease to exist? Did I ever exist at all? Man, reflecting on the nature of existence is giving me a headache. I don't like puppets anymore. Let's go, Zoe! No, stay, Zoe! I can't die now! I have so many dreams! I want to see Niagara Falls! Too bad, you leave. Gaining two mind from learning a very important life lesson. Never skin yourself alive for candy and never trust puppets. Yes. Very much yes. Okay, factory! 
Time to go to a factory! Factories are ruled by long hours, hard physical labor, and the crushing weight of capitalism on everyone's shoulders. It's obviously the perfect place for you to have some fun in a little chaos. There are rows upon rows of conveyor belts staffed with workers assembling uh, something. How do you participate? We will seize the means of production. You and your friends crash a union meeting. It seems the factory workers have turned up to list some complaints to tell the factory boss. Let's tell the boss we won't work weekends anymore, says one worker. I've missed so many good TV show premieres. Let's demand better snacks in the vending machines, says another. I'm sick of off-brand potato chips and candy bars. Tell the boss man that we won't come back to work until my wife lets me get another cat, says a third. It's totally unfair that I can't have more cats. Ooh, I've got one. Tell that mean boss man you demand a raise for plus two doggy treats an hour. Tell the boss you're not working another minute until he gives you a six-month vacation twice a year. With your demands decided, you storm the boss's office. You break down the door and find no one inside. Whoa, where's the boss? Could it be that we never even had a boss? Does anyone remember even meeting him? Or did the factory just show up one day and we assigned ourselves jobs and conditions because it seemed logical? If there's no boss, then I want to be the boss. First rule is, I make all the money, and anyone who bitches about it gets fired. Shit, now everyone's gonna want to be the boss. And whoever becomes the boss will just be hated by everyone else and kicked out. It's a never-ending cycle. That sucks, but you don't work here, so maybe you should just let them handle it? LOL joking, can you imagine? Of course you're gonna propose your own solution. Who should be the new boss? You need no bosses, fuse the consciousness of all the factory workers into one being, proletariat of the working class. Or this dog. What he lacks in business acumen, he makes up for in cuteness, woof woof. Great idea, Zoe. Dogs are monsters' best friend, and they'd never betray us. Yeah, I think dogs are the only non-corruptible creature left on Earth. A dog would make a great boss. I see no flaws in this plan whatsoever. A few days later, your plan is in full effect. Cue the theme song! He calls the shots, he signs the checks, he wags his tail and wants his pets. Boss dog, he's a boss who loves you. Boss dog, give him walks and give him praise. Boss dog, you'll be sure to get a raise. Boss dog, he's a boss who loves you. If you want to be paid in treats, boss dog, and lead your employer on a leash, boss dog, call boss dog, he's a boss who loves you. Woof woof. On today's episode of Boss Dog, the company accountant enters the boss's office. Boss Dog is scooting around the carpet on his butt. Canned laughter ensues. Hey, Boss Dog, says the accountant. I was looking over this quarter's finances and profits are plummeting. We need to lay off at least a third of the staff. The accountant hands Boss Dog the financial reports. Boss Dog chews them to bits. Oh, Boss Dog. Well, okay, I guess we'll just ignore the problem for now. <sighs> Can't argue with the boss. Wow, this is a great plan! Sure, this company lost two money, but look how cute Boss Dog is! He's got soft ears and plus two soul. True! We have a lot of soul? Where do we go? The casino is always a gamba. I don't want to go to the casino. No, nope, no thank you. Let's go to... Ah! Our car stopped! Scott stops the car to stop sign. But before he could get going again, there's a knock on the driver's side window. Hey, yo, hello, customers! I'm a traveling roadside salesman, and I have a fabulous deal just for you! Hey, I remember you! You stopped our car and sold us something earlier! Who said these cursed earrings of horrible curses would be 100% curse-free if we bought the probably not curse warranty package? But it did work, and now we got two curse earrings and a curse warranty statement full of big words that hurt my brain! We want our money back! Ah, is that so? May I direct your attention to my refund policy? If you're dissatisfied with our product, you can always return it for a refund if you correctly answer one of my riddles. Ah, fine, lay it on me then. I have one voice, four feet in the morning, two feet in the afternoon, and three feet at night. What am I? You're a seahorse! No, wait, a regular horse! No, wait, an air hockey table! Final answer! I don't think that's it, buddy. But don't worry, I have a plan. Let's ask the horny dating app, TM! I'll update my profile, sexy, fun-loving ghost looking for someone who's open-minded to kinks, likes reading and has four feet in the morning, two at moon, and three at night. 
Damn it! All I'm getting are assholes who have the same number of feet 24-7! Dating app algorithms suck! Looks like your friend's deduction methods are dead ends! Time for you to swoop in and solve this riddle! Okay. Life finds a way, build a logic-defying chimera that defies all the requisites of the riddle. Or how much do you charge for an answer? I'll pay you anything to get my friend's money back. We will use our money! Wait, what? If you pay me for your refund, won't you just lose money in the end? Look at me. Seriously. Look at me! Look me deep in the eyes and hear me when I say, I literally don't care, boo! But that doesn't make sense. Who cares about making sense? I just want my money back. It was my favorite money! These dollars and I have been through thick and thin together, and I can't end our long-storied friendship by spending them on a scam. I... You know what? I have no reason to be talking to you of this. I'll tell you this riddle solution and give you your refund for negative two money. It was a... Uh... Let me stop you right there. I don't care. I never cared. Keep your dumb riddle to yourself and just give me my cash back. Ah, fine. Have it your way. See you next time. Polly gets her dollars back and you gain two mind for solving the riddle. By throwing money at the problem until it went away. Pay to win for the win. Hooray! These cars are dangerously souped up. The desert is a wasteland of hubcaps and bullet shells. Everybody's wearing leather, scrap metal armor, gas masks, and a lot of black eyeshadow. Welcome to the post-apocalyptic settlement, where the only law to abide is the need for speed. There are plenty of dangerous diesel punk activities to fill your time, what do you do? Race to the death? Get your own post-apocalyptic glow-up? Fight to the death! Let's fight! You and your friends head up to the death dome. You find a beautiful woman presiding over the carnage. Whoa, is that Damien? Sup, bro? I like your cute outfit. Shh! Don't call me Damien here! These people know me as the queen of the road, a bloodthirsty warmongress with an eyeliner sharp enough to kill. Anyway, since you're here, do you want to fight my subjects in the death dome to honor my queendom? And I'm not giving her any say in the matter because I want to see what happens. You have no time to object before you're thrown into the death dome and the games begin. You fight Bloodbag, the crazed killer who bleeds his victims dry. Then Mad Mickey, a murderous mouse person armed with claws and copyright lawsuits. And finally, Buttersock, whose weapon is, well, a sock full of butter. It's surprisingly painful to be bludgeoned with. Good work, Zoe. If those were just the exhibition fights, now it's time for the real challenge. Bring out Freaky Ferrari! Freaky Ferrari is built like a brick shit house and fights with a car engine on a chain. Fuck, you're gonna die. But maybe Damien may spare you from the battle. You two are friends, right? You may be friends with Damien, but the Queen of the Road spares no life. These lawless lands are governed by my thirst for bloodshed alone. But I will let you pick a weapon to use. The fight's no fun if you die in the first 30 seconds. Go pick whatever's left in the armory. What do we choose? The pen that's actually mightier than the sword? An angry badger duct taped to five guns tied to the end of the stick? It's a classic! Or the power of love! Beneath those scars and scowls, you bet Freaky Ferrari is secretly a big ol' softie. You wrap him in a big hug, gaining two so. What kind of fucking touchy-feely family-friendly bullshit is this? Ooh, I wanna see some body parts! No! Says Ferrari, a manly tear rolling down his weathered cheek. No more body parts! No more fighting! This hug is so warm, so non-violent! I didn't know I could do anything but feel or inflict pain! I don't know if I want to keep inflicting pain! I just have to forfeit and reflect on what sort of man I want to be! Ah, damn it! I don't want to promote toxic masculinity in my hardcore diesel punk gang! You can go, Ferrari! But the rest of you fuckers aren't getting off so easy! Backup champion, go fight Zoe! The next person up to fight is badass Bugatti, whose special move is driving a luxury car kitted out with spikes and guns over his opponent's body. But as Bugatti starts bearing down on you, Freaky Ferrari runs out and punches him square in the grill, completely fucking up the car. I couldn't stand by and let you get hurt, Zoe. Come on, we'll defeat Bugatti together with the power of love. <laughs> this is so fucking corny! Are you crying, bro? No, I'm not crying! I'm not moved by this beauty of love! I have sand in my eyes, really badass sand! 
Hooray for Deus Ex Machinas! You and Ferrari fight side by side and eke out a victory, though it costs you two stamina. That was... a lot. That was definitely a lot. Okay, time for our first conversation with Vera. Talk to Vera. What do we talk to her about? Her snakes or her life of crime? Let's go with her snakes. Ah, the snakes, yes. It can get messy. Styling your hair this spectacularly is hard enough. Imagine if your hair also happens to be a literal nest of venomous snakes. I can imagine it's rough. No, you can't imagine. Believe me. Look at her hair, Vera! You gotta take care of them 24-7 if you want to go about your day without your hairdo rebelling against you. I mean, it's me! The last woman on earth who'd ever want to have a pet. And I got not one, but a couple dozen pets. Fan-fucking-tastic. No, really. A brilliant turn of events. 10 out of 10 on life's twisted sense of humor. I'm sure there are upsides, no? Hmm. Free poison? And I guess a childhood of keeping dozens of snakes on a leash helped me become a fearless leader. So yes, I got a lot of great and deeply annoying practice. And how do you... you know... Look, I know the 20 or so questions you have in mind. To put it simply, half of that stuff is just fucked up monster logic. I try not to think about it too much. The other half, that's private. Okay, sorry for overstepping. Don't sweat it. You know what, Vera? Despite all the bad stuff you mentioned, I still find your snakes cute. And they seem to like you very much. I guess. I mean, they're sort of okay. It's kinda nice that in a way I never have to feel completely alone. But if you ever tell anyone I said that, I'll murder you. Noted. Eventually, Vera lets you pet some of her snakes! And she even tells you some of their names! And you get almost no snake bites! Shady business! Vera always has a scheme going on. She brings some extra dough for the trip, but better to not ask too many questions. Next week, every turn will gain one money and minus one so. Okay. That's the first conversation down. We need to pick up base. Let's go to... Should we increase our money? We're kind of running out of money, so we don't want to risk it. And we still need to complete the City of Vice plotline, so I say we increase our stamina. Let's go to Doom's Diner! Oh! The car is stopped again! Hey, you just reached a high amount of soul! Good for you! Does that mean you're aiming for the soul-based destination? If so, there's a wacky adventure that could unlock a layer for your destination. Wanna go for it? Yes. Great, the adventure will be waiting for you on the road. Sorry for breaking the fourth wall, see ya! Okay. You read about this diner in a listicle in the top 10 most cursed restaurants you should never ever visit. Obviously you took that as a challenge. Seriously, after all that dark magic you've messed with over the years, you think you could handle a diner. So now that you're here, what do you do? We will increase our stamina. You all enter the diner and sit down to order. Your waiter appears in a cloud of baleful energy and french fry smell. Welcome to Doom's Diner. Behold the den of shadow and rot. Heavy with the weight of curses handed down from generation two. Yeah, yeah, we already heard it from your greeter. He's in the parking lot with his dick out screaming that the end of all diners is nigh. Oh, you mean Naked Dave? He doesn't work here. Oh, does he act like that cause uh, he's cursed now? Nah. Took the wrong kind of shrooms. But this place can and will curse you. Even the menu items harbor dark, forbidden magic that will permanently ruin you if you consume it. Yeah, speaking of the menu, if I order the Doom Burger meal deal, can I replace my side with a beer? And also my entree. Actually, I just think I want three beers. I want hot wings, please. Which sauce do you recommend? The thing from Las Vegas or literal blood, maybe? Haven't you people ever heard of heeding a goddamn warning? This Food is cursed! If you eat it, it'll corrode you like a beast in repose. It'll twist your mind and sell your soul to the highest bidder. It! Shouldn't you as a waiter and all be selling us on the idea of eating at this diner? You don't seem very good at your job, boo! So, Zoe, what are you gonna order? What do we order, friendos? 
the Everything Burger, Evil Milkshake and Deviled Eggs, Extra Devilish, or Soup. The Everything Burger! Do you even understand the danger you're putting yourself in? That burger has everything on it! That sounds like a challenge! Does it have pineapple on it? Yes. Does it have Baphomet's Butthole Assault hot sauce on it? Yes, it does. And every other sauce in the world, it has everything! Does it have dog treats? Even the high-end ones from the good pet store uptown? What about Scott's butt? Does the burger have Scott's butt on it? Does this have one specific brownie my grandma made in fourth grade that was so good it created the core memory? Yes, it has all that shit! I cannot make it clearer that this burger has everything! If I bring you the damn burger, will you stop asking dumb questions? Um, probably not. But you could try. Gerard brings you the everything burger. You take a bite and holy shit. It really does have all those ingredients Polly and Scott mentioned and many more. You gain two stamina. It even has, yuck, all those pickles. You hate pickles. Damn, why do you always forget to ask for no pickles? How can all these ingredients even fit on this burger anyway? And what's this taste? Could it be Scott's butt? Nah, that can't be it. Or can it? All these questions and more plague your brain without answers. The same way the ingredients plague this burger without logic. You lose to mind. Okay. So, where to next? Since we're gonna gain... No, we're gonna lose one soul. Which will put us at 22. Let's gain more so. Our car is stopped! You're driving along like normal when you hear an inexplicable guitar riff. Then there's suddenly a blue anteater in your car. Hey, it's me, Tubular Eddie! Here to remind you that cool kids say no to gambling. Whoa, where did you come from, bro? <laughs> don't think about it. You probably had too much shrooms. Okay. It's too late to talk to us about gambling, Eddie. We're on our way to the city of Vice to gamble right now. Bummer, it looks like you'll never be a cool kid. Oh no, whatever shall we do? It's okay though, I'm headed to the city of Vice too. And I bet everything I own that I can talk you out of gambling when we get there. Why are you going to the city of Vice? It seems like the opposite of a place someone who hates gambling would want to go. Because I'm on a mission to teach the world that gambling is bad. And the city of Vice by far needs that advice the most. It's also where my favorite cocaine dealer does all his business. All cool kids do coke. Are you sure about that? Huh. Good luck getting the denizens of the city of Vice to give up gambling. You'd have better luck talking to the merfolk into moving to the Sahara. I know, it'll be a difficult task. But I've got a funny feeling my luck's about to turn around. Zoe, you're as good at giving advice as I am at radical skateboard tricks. Can you think of a creative way to convince a bunch of gambling addicts to give up their incredible rush of gambling? Well, the gamble to end all gambles get the gamblers to gamble on how long they could go without gambling. Are they gambling if they gamble about not gambling? Or give them a baby to raise collectively. The power of responsible parenting will push them into the right direction. Let's go with... The baby! Great idea! Parenting is a great way to force adults to stop doing things they love, like gambling! Makes sense to me, but where are you gonna get a baby for your plan? Haha, <laughs> what I tell you, the last time you asked me an uncomfortable question, kiddo! Um, don't think about it? Exactly! See you at the City of Vice! Later at the City of Vice, 20-something people are in the casino lobby discussing the strange letters they received telling them to gather here. Hiya, gambling addicts! I'm Tubular Eddie! And I've brought you all here to award you a collective 10 million bucks for being the best gamblers in all of the City of Vice! You can take the money and run, or you can spin it on the Wheel of Misfortune for a chance to triple your payout! So there's a sliver of a chance we'd win 30 million dollars? We're doing that, obviously! Eddie spins the wheel. It looks like it might stop at the 30 million payout, but at the last minute it flips to... a baby! Congrats! You all lost 10 million dollars and now you have to collectively raise this child to be a responsible adult. There's no fucking way we're doing that! Bet you can't! Oh, you bet! You're on! And so the addicts throw themselves into raising the child. They're so busy parenting that they don't have time to go to casinos, and they become much healthier for it. 
The joys of parenting also bring the former addicts together. They fall deeply, mutually in love, and also have group sex now. Their lives are forever changed, and you made off with two soul for your health. But you lose too high for choosing parental responsibility over the fun of gambling. Okay. And so a dungeon would be a dark and scary place for people to be locked up and punished. But in the world of video game logic, everyone knows dungeons are just challenging labyrinths waiting to be explored. There are plenty of ways to plunder a dungeon. What's your preferred method? Let's go grind experience. Time to get your RPG on. You suggest grinding this dungeon for experience points. I love being on the grind. Let's do it. I love grinding too. So this should be fun. Not the right kind of grinding. But it's too late to explain, you're surrounded by slimes to kill, time to grind for XP. You get to work slaying slimes. You'd think this would be a difficult task, but these slimes are actually stupid easy to kill. They practically explode at your touch. In fact, you kill a couple by just staring at them really hard. What the fuck? This feels so mean. I don't like killing slimes. Why are we even doing this to them? I think we're supposed to gain experience from this, which is important for something. If this is for experience, it's not a good experience. The slimes don't deserve to die. Just look at the little guys. They're beautiful. Ah, uh, that's a matter of opinion. Uh, you're right, Scott. This is cruel. These slimes were just chilling in this dark homey dungeon before we started slaughtering them. As you stand around contemplating your heinous actions, the slime in front of you throws itself onto your sword. No! Stay with me, little slime bro. Let me heal you with the power of my hugs. Scott hugs the slime so hard it explodes. Oof, the price of never skipping arm day. I don't get it. Why don't they even try to protect themselves? I think these slimes have gotten so used to adventurers killing them for XP that they've evolved to think their only purpose is to be killed for XP. That's terrible. Can we try to teach these slimes a new way of life? So they won't exist to be slaughtered anymore. That sounds way more fun than tediously spilling slime blood all afternoon. How do you improve the slime's lives? We teach them karate. They'll acquire confidence and self-esteem. They'll value their existence over giving XP points and they'll be able to kick adventurers' asses. Or if their main purpose is giving adventurers experience, help them open a high-end restaurant. It won't sell a meal, it'll offer experience. Let's go with... We're still gonna gain money, so we're kinda safe. Let's help them open a restaurant. Great idea! I've seen enough TV shows about high-end experimental restaurants to run one myself. Easy peasy! You gather up the slimes and work on opening your restaurant. Polly helps out by drinking lots of wine and yelling at people. I said to cut these tomatoes to look like strawberries. You're not supposed to actually make them strawberries, you absolute fucking walnuts. And what's this? I said to paint a surrealist rendition of the Mona Lisa out of pistachio paste on these crackers. This is impressionism! What do you think we're doing here? Making food? Um, yes. That's exactly what I thought we were doing. No, we're not making food. We're making an experience. That's what people are paying for. After much preparation, it's finally the opening day of your restaurant. Adventurers line up to loot the dungeon, but instead they find... Welcome to Le Donjon. I'm your waiter, Scott. May I recommend the animated skeleton crisps for your first course? They're very yummy with our mulberry wine. Scott, 86 of mulberry wine. Someone not me drank it all, and if anyone says it was me, they're fired. What the hell's going on here? We came here to slaughter the Elder Dragon boss, not have fine dining. Oh, speaking of that, we're running a special on the Elder Dragon Tartar entree. It comes with treasure hoard gold shavings on top. You fail to make a profit. In fact, you lose too money on ingredients. But that's business. Let Don John's opening day is still a great success. Oh, we made RP Guide's top 10 dungeon restaurants of the year. I'm so proud of you, little slimes. Now it's time for us to go, but we'll leave you in good hands. There's one slime who has proven himself worthy of wearing the head chef hat. It's, uh, well, to be honest, you slimes all kind of look the same, so I don't know. I'll promote this guy. Good luck. This has truly been an experience worth gaining. You earn plus two so. Okay. Now, where do we go? Should we manage our soul? I think we should manage our soul. 
let's go to the UFO sightseeing spot. You came here today to answer the age-old question, do aliens exist? Who knows if you'll actually find the answer today, but at least it'll be fun to hang out with the other UFO spotters. So besides watching the stars and swapping extraterrestrial conspiracy theories, what do you want to do? Should we make tinfoil hats or send a message? We don't want to head to the city of Vice just yet, we have to complete our layers first for the perfect ending. So I think we should manage our soul and send a message. It's too foggy to see any UFOs, sadly. Wait, that's not fog, it's smoke! You follow it back to the source and find Kale and Abdu! Sup guys, wanna help us send a message to some aliens? I'll send a message to whoever you want if I can bum a hit off that pipe. What do you want the message to say? We don't know yet. Whatever it is, it's gotta be really important, you know? Like something profound and deep and interesting all at once. Something like, a smart man knows a tomato is a fruit. A wise man knows not to put a tomato in a fruit salad. Holy shit, that is wise. If you guys want to send the aliens a message and get one back, maybe instead of being philosophical, the message should be really eye-catching. Yeah, something like, these stoners sent a message to aliens and you'll never believe what happened next. Whoa, whoa, what happened next? That's for us to decide, bro. It all depends on the message. Fuck, you're blowing my mind right now. The future is ours to shape. You guys obviously know what you're doing. Zoe, got any ideas for an attention-grabbing message to send to the aliens? Are you still doing crop circles? These tutorials will teach you more artistic ways to deface Earth's dumb, non-gaseous surface. Subscribe now! Or 8 cool earthlings you must abduct at least once in your life. Number 6 will shock you. Let's go with... The clickbait one. I like it, but I'm not sure I know that many objectively cool people. That's okay, you're so hip and cool that you could easily name a few other cool people. Like, uh, Cool Josh, for example. There's also Rad Richard from school. Your pen pal, Badass Brenda. The homeless man on your block who does kickflips off of parking meters. I love that guy! He bummed a joint off me once and taught me the meaning of life. It means the quality that distinguishes a vital and functional being from a dead body. Whoa, D! That all sounds good, but by my calculations, we're still 4, 3, 17, carry the 2, lots of people short! Well, obviously the rest of the list is gonna be taken up by Caleb doing your road tripping crew. You're the coolest friends around! Aw, Zoe, you corny little shit. Okay, I'm down. We need a cool name for ourselves to make the aliens buy it, though. Maybe the cool friends who are objectively very cool. That's perfect. Man, those aliens would have to be stupid not to meet us. You guys are the coolest friends I've ever had. No aliens respond to your message, but you still gain too hype from the power of friendship. However, you lose two soul from employing clickbait tactics to get your message across. Okay. So, where to next? Hopefully we run into another hitchhiker on our way here. Grave? No hitchhiker! Unfortunate! So we're gonna lose one soul, we gain two, so we gain one. 24 soul, okay. In the middle of the desert, ravers and partygoers have gathered to dance their cares away. You're drawn to some blurry figures in the crowd, ethereal beings who look like they were made out of party. As you behold them, you wonder how you should milk the vibes of this raid. Looks like we're gonna have to repeat a scenario from our first run, so we'll go with finding the rave spot again. Skip, 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 rave spot, skip, 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 rave spot, skip, 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 ghosties, rave spot, skip. Okay, what do we do? We hire, use money, or we use our stamina. We'll use money because we're gaining money. Skip, 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 fast forward, skip, 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 skip. Gain so, minus so. Okay, there we go. Time for our next conversation with Vera, and the most important one. It is time to activate a deep conversation. Let's get real. Let's talk about how Vera manages to do all that she does. So, how do I manage everything I do? Grit, badassery, and spreadsheets. Spreadsheets? Yeah, an awful lot of them. 
It's the only way to properly juggle being a boss bitch who manages multiple businesses and being a self-made woman with a rich personal life. I started managing for my company that develops market-disrupting apps like Murder. Murder. Yes, the Uber for murder. Then I felt I had control over my shit, so I made a spreadsheet to manage my legal law firm. But after that I realized I wasn't taking care of my exercise routine and such. So I made a spreadsheet to monitor that I jogged at least four times a week. Soon after came my spreadsheet to keep track of the books I read, and the one to keep track of the friends I haven't seen in a while because I'm too busy. I see. An awful lot of spreadsheets indeed. Pretty much, yeah. I'm a bit, hmm, stressful. If only days could have more than 24 hours. I just like knowing I'm in control, never leaving anything to chance. The thing is, the more I try to control, the more exhausting it becomes. My goals keep multiplying like rabbits. I gotta conquer life. Sounds like a lot, Vera. Like, do you even enjoy jogging or reading a book? If it becomes a box, you have to check on your spreadsheets? Wow, this is too real. Especially about YouTube and gaming. I don't know anymore. And that scares me. I'm trying to exert control over all aspects of my life. And yet my spreadsheets are sort of getting out of control. I feel trapped in a prison of my own making. Huh. Well, it sounds like it's time for a prison break. How can you help Vera? The correct answer is... There's no shame in delegating, girl. It might take some trust, but it's always better than testing what Vera Oberlin's breaking point is. Delegating? I don't know. People who aren't me tend to be fallible, and overall idiots. What's the alternative? Keep managing everything by yourself until you get to 100 spreadsheets? I'm sure you'd love to celebrate that milestone by having a stress-induced mental breakdown. You're not wrong. Days aren't going over 24 hours anytime soon, I guess. I could have a sort of right hand for my personal business, maybe even a personal assistant for everything else. Ooh, ooh, pick us! Pick me! That's the idea. The more you can take off your plate, the fewer chances there are of you choking. Oof. I just... don't know. I'm not used to accepting help from others. I'm the one who does all the helping. You could try and see if you could get used to it. Hmm. Yeah. I could try it out and see. There's nothing else to lose, is there? I hope I don't regret saying this, Zoe, but your idea might not be terrible for once. Let's give it a chance. You spend the rest of your night discussing how to find a good personal assistant for Vera. She has some high standards, but it seems she's really open to this. Is Vera more than a friend? Hell yes! <laughs>